Allison and Associates Interiors. I just wanted to prove that you were here. Okay, <laughs> so we are going to get started tonight. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. The ladies would probably love this show because it's about decorating, it's about design, it's about flooring, it's about drapes, it's about patterns, it's about home improvement. You name it, you're in that gig, mm -hmm. right? Making your home what you want it to be. Exactly. And so what we have to do, as we always do, is we have a couple hundred sponsors for this show, literally. You know, <laughs> and we want to make sure that we <laughs> give them some applause, right? Yay. And uh, we want to make sure that you guys are uh, know a little bit about our show. First of all, let me say this. Um, we are really geared toward the Austin market in that my idea was is that um, we covered Austin businesses that were local and give people a chance to find out how your business started, what, what you go through on a daily grind, and um, and it's catered to Austin business, but we welcome those listeners from anywhere in the United States world because last time I looked, some of our businesses here do travel if, mm -hmm. if the job's worth it, right, depending right. on what part of the country it's in and where it's going. But our sponsors are also local business in Austin, and we support Austin business, and especially the small business guy that uh, is out there fighting within the symbols and the noise to gain a voice within their local market, and that's the purpose of the show, is to expose a lot of local business. And the cool thing is, you know this, is that my guests that come on, Diana, are free mm -hmm. because the sponsors take care of the time and, and, and the back end of the show. So right. it's really cool. So we want to thank that. So the first person I am going to thank tonight is good old Patsy Aird. Patsy Aird is with Highland Lakes Real Estate, Inc. Mm -hmm. uh, she's out there in the Lake Country, mm -hmm. Lago Vista area. And Beautiful area. She says, hey, if you ever want to buy or sell a home, you need to come out to this area, check it out. So for the 139 people that are moving to Austin daily, <laughs> That's pretty amazing yeah, when is, you think about it? that. You need to check out uh, Patsy Aird, a uh, realtor and, um, out on the Highland Lakes area, and her website is Patsy Aird, that's spelled P-A-T-S-Y-A-I-R-D.com. And by the way, if you're listening, you can't write fast enough, or, or when the show's up on archive, I have all the websites, I have all the sponsors linked on the custom player I rebuild. So you can go and check out their websites after the show. Uh, I want to thank AMS Garage Doors, amsgaragedoors.com, Mike Stewart and Company. They are local here, especially Round Rock, Hutto, Taylor, but just about anywhere, Austin. Um, if your garage door is making noise, if it is that big giant spring, you don't want to mess with that. If you hear it squeaking or the rollers or the lifters, but anyhow, they're the garage door specialist. But what I love about these guys is, let's say you have a garage door problem late at night, car stuck in the garage. <laughs> they come get it out free and then come back and secure it the next day. Yep. So it's pretty cool. So amsgaragestores.com. All right. We're going to go through them a little bit at a time, right? Okay. Again, we want to thank these guys. Yay. Yay. Got the applause on the shore. And then there's the... Okay, so welcome to the show, and that's the doorbell. Thank you, Herdy. You're on. How <laughs> I'm on. You're laughing. You're over here going, those stupid, silly sound effects. Man. <laughs> They're fun. <laughs> what can I say, right? <laughs> They're kind of fun. But anyway, I wanted to welcome you uh, to the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we get started with all the stuff you do, let's give them a website. That okay. That will be linked on the player after the show, but let's go ahead and put one on the on this show so people can, can follow it. Okay, Don't and that would show, be... Though www.allisoninteriors.net and that is A-L-L-I-S-O-N-I-N-T-E-R-I-O-R-S -L -L -I 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 -O -O Wow, net. so just do allisoninteriors.net yeah. and don't forget it's .net. Say that again. Dot dot net. net. Okay, there we go. <laughs> because if you go dot com, you'll get an entirely different It's site. a different person. So dot .net. <laughs> or you'll be hiring the wrong person. That's right, they're in England. Alright, so you know, I'm a guy. So yeah. let's just face it, I'm already a disadvantage on this show tonight. You are Diana. some of my favorite customers. Th that's right. But, you know, I know <laughs> exactly. And I've been on uh, enough video shoots to get an idea what you're doing. But I thought tonight, um, 
the first segment of the show, let's kind of talk about how you get into the, what got you into your business. And, like, and let's give an overview first of what you do. Okay. As an interior designer, what I do is I, for the most part, I work with people in their homes. I can do light commercial, and I have done light commercial, doctors, lawyers, uh, small retail businesses. But what I really enjoy doing is working with people in their homes and really making it what what they didn't know it could be. You know, a place where they really enjoy spending time. You know, it, yeah, so it's comfortable, and, and maybe they just didn't have the eye for it. Yeah, and you well, see all the potential. Yeah, they kind of yeah. get an idea, but they yeah. don't really get an idea, the, right? You know what? I've been in this business for more than 25 years. Today I was in a woman's home, uh, wow. maybe kind of my age, and, you know, That's she's very cool. intelligent, but at the same time she doesn't see space the way that I see it and that I've learned to see it. Is that just from experience then? Uh, training and experience, training experience. education so both, and experience. Both, yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So you get the so you can do the interior design aspect, mm -hmm. and then you also can do the decorating mm -hmm. aspect, mm -hmm. right? I think it's it's very is, is hard. Is the word decorating too broad? You know, it's very hard to split design and decorating. You know, in school we were taught, well, if you're doing design, what that means is that you've got the knowledge and the uh, about the systems, the the building systems, and you might have an, an idea of what walls that might be moved. I'm not an architect, not an engineer. I'm not the one who signs off on a wall being moved, but I have an idea of what could happen with. So the that space. would be working like with the contractors yeah. and the architects that yeah. actually put that together on the front end of They're a the building. They're the ones right. who legally sign off on that. I right. do not. And you might have somebody come in that does design along with them at the time. Yeah, yeah, right, and okay. that might be me. But but the other thing that I do is is the decorating aspect because for me to really give that entire environment, how can you separate the design and the decor of it? Because the decoration aspect is really what brings that client back into it. That's that's the personalization of the space. Wow. Okay. You know. And then so what else you do within this market? Because we're going to make you give me the broad things you do, then we're going to drill down to them. So, Are we drilling down yeah, now? Yeah, we're, we're, well, what, well, what I wanted to do was find out how you got started. You've been at 25 years, plus, right? Yeah. And, plus years. <laughs> and, uh, and, you're, and you're from originally? Originally, I'm from mid-Missouri. is where I grew up is on a farm in mid-Missouri. Pretty, My cool, mom pretty never, cool state. Oh, show and beautiful. Tell. Show, show and me tell. State. Yeah, show me you state. got it. My mom never could understand how, you know, from pig farming and cattle farming I got in design. I don't know either. But, but, but I that's did. where you ended up. But that's where I ended up. And then was working in the Kansas City uh, market. People don't understand Kansas on the Missouri City. Missouri side? It's on, both. Yeah, I know. It's, me, it's the metro. You cross from one side to the you other know, every day. I know. You know, it's like when you move from um, uh, Round Rock into Austin or even Travis it's County into Williamson yeah, County. That you just don't have an understanding that you have done it. It's, yeah. you just, it's all part of one big thing. Exactly. Just exactly. half and half, which exactly. is kind of cool. So it is. you did work in Kansas City for quite a while. Oh, yeah, for, for uh, a number of years. And, 80% and, of probably your career? Probably. Okay. Probably. Worked with uh, remodelers, worked with builders, contractors. Uh, contractors, you know, the whole nine yards. New construction, remodeling, basic updating, uh, even things just as simple as doing uh, window treatments, you know, to get that final, sometimes mm -hmm. that's a finishing thing that takes the echo out. And flooring. Furniture, um, artwork, accessories. Yeah, I we mean, did a video in one of the furniture yeah. stores that you work with clients through, which was kind of cool, right? Doing the pattern one of the video. Showrooms. Uh -huh. Right. So you take people to showrooms, you'll walk with them and mm -hmm. give them ideas and show them stuff. So mm -hmm. it's really like a turnkey sort of thing for you. It can be. Yeah. You know, some it, people need it that much and some people don't. Just so. want guidance? Yeah. Now you had a client that I worked with you on. Yes. From the from just getting it documented, right? that somebody already had their ideas mm -hmm. about what they wanted. They kind of had color choices, and so mm -hmm. you kind of came in to what I call fill in the gaps, right? Oh, yeah. So you're really good about working with people that do have a sense of what's going well, on, you know, but you help get them going in the right direction. Exactly. It's really wonderful when you get to work with somebody who understands what their style sense is because that that cuts down on so much of the guesswork, and and it's not guesswork that I'm doing, but it's, it's the questions and answers to get me from point A to point B. D, if you will, because she already, and she had such a great defined, wonderful, and sometimes crazy sense of style. It was just <laughs> wonderful. Right. And so, what, but what she didn't have was the ability to necessarily back up far enough and see the big picture. And that's part of the problem with a lot of people in their own homes. They might know or have a good sense of what they want, but 
they're too close to it. You yeah, know? it's like it's like a helicopter view versus standing down yeah. on the ground and trying to see the yeah. whole field, right? Yeah, exactly. You you, you kind of see what's in front of you, but you don't get what long term you're trying Trees to accomplish. Trees and forest kind of thing, you know. Yeah. And so what I can come in and do though is I can come in with a very objective. You know, I'm listening. It, usually there's more than one person involved, but not always. And trying to get all points of views of how the space is to be used, what their intent is, how they want it to be. Color pattern. And and that starts to folk come in from that first. So but you first, I'm kinda, asking you the big questions. You could kind of cookie cutter like a whole part of a home and map it out right from flooring to color to everything, right? You well, I don't get, know that it's let, cookie cutter. But. No, but I mean the pe What I don't. What I mean is, <laughs> it's the way to format it for them. Right. I don't mean right. it looks right. cookie cutter. I mean you're you're taking one piece at a time, nailing it down, then taking another piece of it, nailing it down. Well, instead of having this overwhelming amount of for them. this color, this thing, that thing. Correct right. for them. For me, I see that bigger picture. Okay. And then what I start to do for folks who are doing that remodeling and have that larger job, I actually create what I call a spec sheet. I'm used to working with builders. I and have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> I'll tell you what a spec <laughs> sheet is. Since I'm so used to working with builders and remodelers, they need to know what the client wants in the different areas. Gotcha. Walls, floor, ceiling, trim, countertop, uh, tile, stain, grout, you know, it, just to get some of the basics down. So as I'm seeing this big visual, then I'm pulling in all these other pieces to it, and we're documenting, we're putting this down on the paper, gotcha. so that whoever is carrying out that part of the, the work has it on paper, has the client signature going, yes, this is what I want. Well, that's, <laughs> that's always the, important. And that's the goal, right? <laughs> that's right. right. And once that's done, you know, things can fly. Right. Things can fly, and so I, they don't have to worry about all the details because I'm taking care of that. Right, and that takes it the together. stress off. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it even makes if it it's fun. dealing with the people doing the actual work in the home too, you can supervise those folks, yep. and they don't have to worry about that. They might have some opinion, yep. but you can relay that on and kind of be the middle person and, mm -hmm. and be kind of their boss, right? Well, when I've got window treatments going, so you, when you I've got window treatments, you hire them, right? I, that's right. I've got fabric I'm ordering, lining I'm ordering, the workroom that I'm giving this, the the uh, work orders to the installer. I'm out there on the, gotcha. the installation. Um, not that he needs me there, and not that the client needs me there, but you know, sometimes I just don't want to have anything fall through the cracks. No, and you want to. And make, if I need yeah. to be able to run for something last minute that I didn't realize, then I do need to be able to be and there. If you're for that. And if you're there, then if something goes on, you can you can yeah. fix it right there. Or and, if there's a but question, I would think that that would be stuff where you're really building stuff out, like flooring. You know, make mm -hmm. sure that it's going in properly. Uh, maybe even the way uh, drapes are put up, mm -hmm. or maybe the way furniture is arranged, or stuff's being built on I, walls. You know, you know, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't found a lot of issues with when flooring's being laid because flooring being laid seems to be. Um, it's not cookie cutter, but there's that's a very a specific. Word, it is it? a bad word. Thank you very much. I told you that I was talking about. <laughs> but that's the don't way. Don't use the word cookie cutter, Herbie. Yeah, because no that. one wants a cookie cutter home. I don't mean. They I, want I, a I think I meant that from home. like the elephant's this big and you're taking yeah. a bite at a time. That's okay. what I was really trying to, to say. <laughs> oh, I get it. I okay, get it. thank you. Cookie cutters out. We're done. We're done. Cookie now cutter. I lost my train of thought. No, no, no. <laughs> you were talking about flooring doesn't really okay. need. Okay. Well, it does. Flooring is important, but it doesn't seem to have as many variables as what a window treatment might have when it's being hung. Now flooring has a lot of variables but I have always hammered that out with right. whoever is doing the installation in advance because with the materials that they're ordering and they're getting their workmen in there's so much more that has to be done pre that. And not that the window treatments aren't the same but it's it's different. Yeah. You've got a, a fabric that is movable and do we want it to there's a term called break on the floor. If you look at men when they are standing, their trousers as it hits the shoe, that's a break. Right. Okay, so there's a little crease. Yep. So do we want the draperies to break at the floor, or, or do, do you we want, want them a quarter be, inch above? above? So all that has to be decided. Yeah, because that will then determine where the, the rod is. And little they, things. Oh, it's just a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, just so we let our listeners know, yeah. if we continue on this track of I don't know where to start and where to end begin. <laughs> Which um, is my favorite client, what too. What sort of certifications are required for your business, or what what is it that you're certified in? Because obviously okay. there's some 
their schooling goes with this, correct? So as far as what is required to be an interior designer or decorator, there is nothing in the state of Texas and in most states. I think there's maybe three or four states that say to be an interior designer and they've got certain definitions for that, right. that you've got to do, have done this, this, and this. Um, my undergraduate degree is a Bachelor of Science in Housing and Interior Design. Awesome. My, uh, bachelor, uh, my master's degree is in environmental design, which is what sometimes interior design got called later on because, you know, they're playing with the name. Correct. Yeah, politically okay, correct. Got it. And and then beyond <laughs> and then beyond that I had boo. a I don't have a boo up there. <laughs> had a, oh, wow. a PhD in, in architectural studies where I studied uh, uh, uh the behavior, right. uh, environment and behavior of people, you know, really kind of observing how people are in their, their spaces and, and what really affects them. Um, I've uh, passed the National Council of Interior Design Qualifications Test two-day that's the test for interior designers. That means that I can be a professional member of any professional organization instead of an allied or associate member. Awesome. So I'm a professional member of the American Society of the Interior Designers. Um, I am a member of the National Kitchen and Bath Association, but I am not a certified bath or certified kitchen designer. That's a whole other set of which, tests. Which we know somebody that does that. Oh, absolutely. We all can work together on absolutely. That, right? I love that's, pairing with people. That, that's cool. Member of the National Association for the Remodeling Institute. I'm trying to think what else I well, have. Well, yes, but you, you've got, and it's on our website, yeah. which is allisoninteriors.net. Net. Dot net. net. Yeah. And um, also, um, you've been highlighted, uh, I, I, when I posted mm -hmm. about the uh, show today, mm -hmm. uh, you've been highlighted in a couple of different magazines, mm -hmm. correct? That's right. You want That's to name right. some well, of those? Well, for instance... Do you remember? Yeah, I've got because you know when you get all this stuff, you get PRs that you forget over the years. I know. I do. Been there, done I try. That. I try to write them down. Been there, done I've been that. in the Kansas City Star and quoted in there several times, and the Sun newspapers up in that Kansas City area. Um, Custom Builder Magazine. I was co-chair on a uh, ASID. Um, uh, show home awesome. that I was the person, the point person in charge of or responsible for talking to the 17 design firms including my own firm that was in charge of that, uh, working with that and then communicating to the builder because the builder didn't want to talk to however many people those 17 firms represented and I don't blame him, he shouldn't have and that was my job okay. and so that and then I had a, a kitchen area uh, in a lower level that was highlighted in that. Cool. Um, Kansas City Homes and Gardens several times, Better Homes and Gardens. I that that's was really pretty, fun. That's pretty nice. That was very cool. We had this huge remodel. We had this space. It was a 19, I'm trying to think, 60s or 50s ranch. And you know how those houses were then. They were very segmented. So there was a room for each thing that was going to go yeah, it was on. Yeah, a very divided up house. Very divided. But it wasn't cookie cutter. No. Don't want to that <laughs> it was not cookie cutter. <laughs> but it was divided up in the section. Yeah, yeah. It was closed off. So we room went in room and we room. had three rooms, one, two, three, maybe four rooms actually, opened up into each other and I was working with a Kitchens by Clevenos in Kansas City on the kitchen area and some other folks and and so we were doing this great wonderful stuff using Jerusalem mm -hmm. stone which sparkled on the That's fireplace. Cool. It was very cool. And on the at the back end the client goes, you know, we've got this three quarter bath. That means it's a bath that has a shower, a toilet, doesn't have a tub. And it's right off the kitchen. And you know, it doesn't really need a lot, but we could do a little in there. And so yeah, in, in the whole scheme of that project, that wasn't much. Did they much. picture it for their magazine? That, the article? bathroom, the three-quarter bathroom, this little niche we put beside the That's toilet for magazines in? was what got in Better Homes and Gardens. Wow. Not this whole huge project. You know, isn't it amazing what people <laughs> find to be important? But you know what? That's just kind of a uh, story. You know, yeah. If they wanted to highlight that, yeah. it's something kind of cool. It right? was a way, to, to, big, to, big magazine a way to get a little bit right. more storage into that right. area. And yeah. you just Recently, we're on did a little uh, uh, speaking engagement on shades and colors and stuff. oh, Fifty uh, Shades of Beige, right? At, Breaking uh, at the, the bondage of bland, right? At the home and garden show, that was fun. It was real fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was. But fun. I mean, you know, that that's good. Mm -hmm. You get to speak to people and, and show them stuff, mm -hmm. and so. I have Diana's a book. out there, you know. Yeah. You have a what? I have a book coming out. It was oh, supposed yeah, to be published right. in October, but I it's keep February for now. That. Is this a myth? It is, uh, you know. Look at. I even printed out now the. No, your, do I get? Do I get a look copy? Look at that. You might. Who knows? We'll see. 
<laughs> no, I'll, I'll, I'll buy it. <laughs> Estimating okay, cool. and costing for interior designers, step-by-step -step workbook. It's a textbook, yeah. So it helps students and it helps people who are already in the business understand how to calculate the materials that That's they need. Awesome. I thought so. So did so, Fairchild. So they can go in and figure up uh, the different kinds of materials for a job so yeah. that they can cost it out. Yeah. And then you come in behind it and help them with that. Or yeah. You know, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, and, and it gets your name out there, too. I do like that. Like, I love know, seeing my name in print. I can't, can't imagine that. <laughs> where did I ever know that from? Hmm. I do like that. Well, you know what? Time flies. And yeah. we're going to take another short break. And okay. we're going to thank some more of our wonderful sponsors. Um, Yay! So, you know, you're going to think this is hokey, but did it take a lot of time? Yeah, to get all, <laughs> to get all that stuff done. You know, all your degrees. Yes. Yes. Yes, it did yes. take a lot of yes. time. Yeah, it's almost like the doctor of houses. I'm a yeah. doctor in the house business, design yeah. business, right? Psychology of the interiors right. is and what it so, is. Oh, one more question for, well, we'll come back. What I'm going to ask you when we come back okay. from the break is, is what new trends are being set. Okay. How do you keep up with, because I know in every business, you know, there's always mm -hmm. new things coming out, new ideas, new materials, better ways to do stuff. Yep better glues, better materials. So yep. when we come back, I'd like to kind of get a feel for where you think the, the look's going. Okay. You know, there was that huge time where people were moving to Texas from California and they were tearing down walls of houses, right, because they wanted the interior to be open and airy because mm -hmm. that's the kind of houses. So it mm -hmm. just depends where you live, right? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll be back. So uh, we want to thank uh, Mario Amador is with Liberty Tax in Georgetown. And... Um, He'll be linked directly to his Facebook page, but everybody, believe it or not, January was just here. It's gone. It's now uh, going into September and then October, then November. So for those of you that uh, have some deadlines coming up in October, you need to be aware of that. For those of you that are shoeboxing right now or have multiple shoeboxes with multiple receipts, tracking your miles mm -hmm. and haven't put them into electronic form online, uh, I would highly recommend this guy. And so we're going to give you a number. He's located in Georgetown, Texas. It's Mario Amador with Liberty Tax, and his number is 512-843-2803. That's 512-843-2803. His website will be linked, but what's cool about Mario is he's going around doing big old um, presentations right now on Obamacare. So you know exactly what's going on and what's you, you know where they're at from a tax standpoint so he's doing seminars and presentations and he's a really great guy so I'm uh, glad to have you for a sponsor my friend and uh, go check him out in Georgetown Texas Liberty Tax Mario Amador alright and then you know you don't know Danny L. Smith you've seen pictures right. of him right right Daniel Smith com is where he likes to direct the traffic he is with gateway loans he's been a mortgage officer for over 29 years state of Texas which is awesome so and he handles just about any kind of uh, mortgage transaction there is he really specializes in the jumbo which in Texas that's four hundred seventeen thousand dollars if you want to know what a jumbo loan starts at Right, but he can do anything. And somebody asked him the other day, and I was kind of laughing, was, "Do you do refinance?" And he laughed and said, "Am I a loan officer or what?" <laughs> so, you know, for those of you that haven't refinanced with the rates that they're where they're at, they're starting to go up a little bit. Mm -hmm. You might want to do that. My brother just did that, and they went, "Wow, we should have did this mm -hmm. last year." So keep that in mind. But go check out Danny L. Smith at DannyLSmith.com. He's also a John Maxwell. A certified coach and he does a guerrilla marketing series for realtors and as a matter of fact if you're in Austin and you want to come join us tomorrow at 1130 we start a whole new series and um, it's going to be at the Egg and I on Anderson Lane and so you're welcome to come down tomorrow so if you don't catch this live show and you're on archive and you haven't listened to it come down and see us don't be a realtor to come I'm going to be presenting the YouTube series tomorrow there so come join us and thank you very much you see what I have to go through every show? Well, you know, but they're paying great, the bill, right? But these great, wonderful sponsors, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And this is what we always like to do for those guys. Yeah. I know, you, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it gets healthier as the evening goes on. You almost go. But then when you hear the show over, it makes sense, right? Okay, it does. Not when you're it doing does. it, it just feels hokey. <laughs> All right, so we're back. Uh, and let's go ahead and give me your website again, Diane. Okay, it's www.allisoninteriors.net. Net. Net. Yeah, don't put .com on our videos. 
like yeah. I did one time, and then to go back and change it. <laughs> yeah, because that's not right. That's not right. No, that, it went to the wrong me. side, and I changed that. So yeah, it's that's all England. Good. All that right. would be real expensive. All right, so we got so much to cover. I want to get into patterns and colors okay. and all that, but the question I was, uh, the point I was leaving before the first break was, and that is, how do you keep up with all the trends, materials, and things going on in this business? And there's a lot going on, and it's not even just the materials and such; it's even the technology. Okay. You know? Yeah. So what what I generally do is I participate in a lot of what's called CEUs. A lot of businesses go do those continuing education units, and the uh, different manufacturers and the reps come in and show us the newest thing that are huh. that is coming out. Um, and so keeping in track with that and actually for interior design one of the things that I keep a track of and, and watch is clothing design more so on the colors and the patterns and things that are being used there because well, that's pretty ingenious interior well it's I wish it was ingenious but no it's just one of those things that's you out there you just notice it yeah, well, interior design happens after fashion. Fashion goes in and out really fast, right? Right. So it's a seasonal thing. Interiors, you don't want them to go in and out no, that fast. You, 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 no. But you can start. I to, can see that. Yeah, yeah, that'd be real expensive. I mean, that would be, be fun be for good me. Good for you, but bad for the poor end. <laughs> but that's not what people want. They want right. to be able to have something that lasts. Right. And so, but that gives you an idea of, you know, if you're seeing a lot of. Um, ethnic things that are mixed around, which you are, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of Asian and Indian, um, African, a lot of different things that are, are being used together, the different patterns, you know, those are things that we start looking at and then all of a sudden you start seeing them in the brand new fabrics that are coming out in the furniture end. Now that doesn't mean I'm going to put that all over a sofa. But you I might, get ideas. Yeah, I might keep my sofa a little bit more neutral so that we can keep ideas. that over time. Okay. But we're going to pull in those patterns somewhere, whether it's maybe with um, accessories and artwork, or uh, possibly we'll just do it with pillows or something. Right, cool. You know, it's a, just enough to do a, a peak for it. That's awesome. Um, and and certainly, you know, one of the things that I have found over the years is. What I'm finding from my clients, what they're asking for, is usually before anything you're seeing published. Okay, so the folks who are wanting to keep the lighter finishes, uh, the bleached finishes, even moving to white, um, because we've had a lot of very heavy and dark finishes for a while. And now um, we're going light. It, well, it's not all going light. Well, no, Almost it everything just, it goes. Just depend, yeah. It depends on what you're doing. Yeah. Right. So yeah. there's, the, you don't have to worry about always being right on the hottest thing. You know, you and, want to keep yeah. it within what they're wanting. And here's what I have found is that even what somebody looks at a fabric or a color and thinks it's the most hideous, god awful thing there ever was, <laughs> well, you know, out of context it might be. But when it's put together in the appropriate way, anything looks great. So it's just a matter of how it's organized right. and how it's put and together. And how it's put together. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. color is color, and then you got to figure out how to make it work. That's right, how to right? create it with the patterns so and the textures. one person's pink may be great, and one person's dark green may be great. Well, and one person's pink up. may be loved by people who thought they would never love pink right. because, because of how it's Right, because you could mix together. it with blacks, or you, know, you could come in and have some fun with that. Yeah, right? yeah. I'm just saying, there's some wild ways to do stuff, and some of that's commercial, and some mm -hmm. of that's residential mm -hmm. stuff, right? Okay, right. so the other thing I noticed was is that you seem to be doing or helping a lot of people that have been in their homes mm -hmm. now say 15 years uh, mm -hmm. the houses market you know the yeah. interiors have changed looks yeah. and there's remodeling to be done so that's a real good yeah well uh, client for you too right well when a house gets to be about 15 10 to 15 years old think about all the materials in there that are starting to get old. Yeah, now, 15 out. years ago, or even 20 years ago, how much carpet were we using? We were using a lot of carpet. Yeah, carpet's kind of, yeah. And, okay. and the carpet companies say, you know, carpet should be changed every seven years. Generally, people might change it every 15 or 20 years, or we just yank the sucker out and, and put, put down tile floors. or put down wood, uh, especially in those areas that take heavy use, because certainly it makes more sense over the long run if somebody can afford afford it to put down a product that's going to wear better over time right. than what carpet does. Keep but the carpet in the soft pets, areas. You have to consider oh, kids, yeah. you have to consider slipping and sliding. And oh yeah, oh yeah, stuff, so. oh yeah, safety. All right, safety so thing. that reminds me of the next thing I want to ask you is, so what is a typical 
uh, somebody calls you, uh -huh. we found you, we want to talk to you, or somebody referred, like a lot of people have done, they've mm -hmm. referred you out. What is your normal process? Okay. Well, one of the ladies from the Home and Garden Show, I was just out at her house today for the oh, initial. Awesome. So yeah, that was fun. Yay. Cool. Yay. Two, two. Even better. <laughs> I know. Wow. They were delightful people. But So the process is this. is uh, Basically, we start with an initial consultation. Um, one lady needs me to do a few more things than this other one just needed a consult. So I come in and we kind of take a look at what it is that she has right now. Gotcha. Uh, she had moved in not that long ago. She's painted some walls herself. She doesn't mind painting. Um, and then we started talking about the lighting because she had some lighting issues. She needed some more can lights, uh, wanted some decorative pendant lights over the bar area, talked about maybe um, almost refacing, not refacing, but um, uh, just uh, amplifying the kitchen a bit, taking out the countertops that were laminate and going to put in some other kind of, whether it's silestone or, or whatever granite. Whatever decision is, right. Yeah, update, update the yeah, look. Update, update the, the look. look. Thank okay, you. That was it. the word I was looking for. Not cookie for. cutter, but update. Update. Right. That's right. And and where to add the no, accent. I'm not, not going get, to get away from that tonight. I but know. It. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So getting more newer technology, yeah. new cool look. Yeah. And and one of the things when and you know, generally I expect that when people have me over, they're wanting my opinion. But I also respect where they are in their life and what they're doing and what they have. And I'm not about to jump in and and and, and there's no reason to to say anything yeah, bad you're like anybody. A sponge. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, you're a big sponge that just goes in and listens to everything they're going to do. And right? I do, and, and yeah. And then take the notes and kind of get them some ideas yeah. to start it, right? Well, for instance, we tightened up her living room group. So she was having the traffic pattern was going through the living room, the uh, uh, seating area to get back into the bedrooms. Okay, she had enough room. We pulled the sofa away from the back wall easily, three and a half feet, had enough room to do that. So now the that seating area... She had a hallway then behind the sofa. Right, so people weren't walking yeah. right through the the, the, yeah. the, the walk. -in. You know, but simple things like that. Or where to hang the Space artwork. Space design. Color. You know, I mean, we get into everything, but it's generally the clients leading me through and, and talking about what they like, what they don't like, what they wish they had, what they didn't have. And, you know, some things just aren't that expensive to do and don't cost anything just to, to affect such a change. Right. And other things such as redoing bathroom cabinets and such. Yeah, when you start such, getting into the remodeling or the re. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so the initial consultation is just really sitting down with that client. Uh, after you get a call, what, listening to what they're thinking, mm -hmm. and then do you come back with an official proposal for them? If or, they need it, or, yeah. Right, or do you actually try to take care of it right then when you're with that client? Today, we took care of everything right then. So, we picked so out colors, I gave the them people to go to. But it to. was also mm -hmm. getting it finished and yeah. completing what she wanted. Moved the furniture, talked about where to hang the artwork, and got her in touch with a remodeler. So there you go. Yeah. So so that was what you had to do, and then uh, yeah. now are you free of that job, or will you be back uh, She it? will probably uh, have me come out a little bit more here okay, and there so for Okay, so there's follow-up that yeah. goes on, and you'll make sure yeah. that, you know. Yeah. Okay. Now, I've had one uh, not too long ago that basically what I was doing, though, for her was more than just the finishes on the walls and such. It was also pulling together the furniture and the bedding and the draperies and, and all of that. And so after we had our initial consultation, what we did was we sat down. I looked at what the scope of the job was. Uh -huh. uh, there's a certain design fee that's attached to that. You know, what is it of my time that it's going to take? Right. And, and then going forward and then taking care of certain aspects of that job and getting it to where they're really happy with it. But I mean, that's something, it's, it's a, it's, it's not, we talk and Here's my proposal. No, it's a discussion. There, I, I, I can see that there's yeah. ongoing yeah. information being processed through that till yeah. you get to exactly what's going to happen. Exactly. Right? That's just natural. Well, design isn't linear. No, that's, that's what I'm thing. saying. It's not yeah. cookie cutter. Right. It is so not cookie cutter. <laughs> if, only, if it was cookie cutter, I wouldn't I, have a job. I, well, any <laughs> listeners tonight, if you can count how many cookie cutters we say in the show, we'll give you a nickel for cookie cutter. <laughs> He'll give you a nickel you, for no, cookie cutter. Yeah, Diana will give you a nickel. No. <laughs> We're just messing with you. Okay. So, all right. So, one of the things also that I noticed that you really like to do mm -hmm. is you like to get people to be thinking in terms of patterns, not always being so generic and right. stuffy and plain, right? right? That you can 
do a lot of contrast, which Correct. I think is kind of cool. Yeah. So how does that work? Well, you see, this is the thing about human nature. You kind of sometimes... I'm asking good questions. You are asking such okay, good questions. Okay. I'm so impressed. It's our crack production I am staff so in our state-of-the-art studio here. Yeah. Right. But what happens is that a lot of people will default back to where they feel comfortable. And they feel comfortable when they look at solids and some simple, you know, maybe chenilles. And, and then they see something that they identify has a pattern. But the pattern is so small that when it you stand even, back it, three it, feet, it's a solid. It, you know yeah. yeah. And so what happens is you start to lose the depth and the, the, the spacious, well, not just the spaciousness, but the depth and the interest in the place because everything becomes so solid and sometimes neutral. And so what I have found over time, I have discovered that, well, it's not just me. I mean, it's one of the things is that when you start looking at the proportion of the different patterns that you're using. Now, I will tell you there are some people who would just die if any floral came into their home. That's cool. No big deal. But a nice, really big size, let's say 27, 36-inch scaled repeat of a floral pattern can really add this wonderful elongation to anything you're doing that on. Big um, space. Big space is really great for that. You know, it's again that proportion and scale thing. But if you've got a large scale pattern, whether it's a floral or whether it's a geometric, whatever it is, then I get into a medium sized pattern and then I can get into a small and then I can get into different textures. Um, you know, so you can actually end up with a number of different patterns in there without realizing it because it's not hitting you in the face. Again, the sofa might be something that is, whether it's solid or a smaller textured kind of pattern. Right. And then in the pillows, maybe we go it's crazy still and do something it's still, big. It still blends in. Yeah. It doesn't look like the guy that's wearing the plaid shirt oh, with no, the plaid no, no, pants. No, no, no. You know no, what I'm no, saying? No, no, no. It's, it's, a, it's, right. it's, it's mixed the colors. It's mm -hmm. a mix of the geometrics. And I've seen this, so I mm -hmm. know yeah. now. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I've seen it happen. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So. And, and then we're looking at the levels that we're working on, too, from the floor, which might be the area rug, up to the mid-level where you sit, up to the eye level, which is artwork and a set. Accessories. Um, now, we don't necessarily go to the ceiling. You can, <coughs> but most people don't tend to look up. Unless, right. unless we're directing the eye to look up, people don't tend to do that. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. It makes good sense. Mm -hmm. All right, so time plots. <laughs> and we are, uh, you, you are listening to a broadcast on the Purdy Burke Internet Broadcast Network from the State of Art Studios right here in Round Rock tonight. And we are visiting with Diana Allison with Allison Associates Interiors. And her website is alisonteers.net. .net. Pretty good, huh? I like that. Right. So, um, but we do have so many sponsors that I can never get to them all on the show. But I want to thank you because you are one of our sponsors. Yes, I am. And I appreciate that. And uh, she is on board for the 20 shows we started on August 6th. We'll finish either 1st of January or right around there, or late mm -hmm. December. Usually in the holidays, I try to leave that week open so we give a business a fair chance to have an audience, mm -hmm. even on the on-demand, uh, but wanted to thank you, and you've been on, you know, we've got this cool custom player now that when the show's over, right, That's it right. links to your website, mm -hmm. so all my sponsors are linked on this custom player, so mm -hmm. um, for those of you listening first time, you can go to Hurdy Burke Consulting on Facebook, just type Hurdy Burke, and I better spell that, H-U-R-D-I-E-B-U-R-K, Consulting. Mm -hmm. uh, find me on Facebook, but if just type in Hurdy Burke, you'll that'll mm -hmm. come up. Okay, mm -hmm. so you come um, up on a lot, right? Of and so you can get. I can always share that custom player, but I post it on Twitter. I post mm -hmm. it on this G Plus account. So you're never too far away from it if you go look for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we wanted to want to thank you for being a sponsor of the show. You're and welcome. then I've got our good old uh, Sherry Sally, who mm -hmm. um, is uh, up here in uh, Williamson County. Uh, mm -hmm. Realtor, and I was. She was bragging yesterday. She had two closings and two new negotiations she did yesterday. Oh wow! Yesterday, one day, she's like, "Yahoo!" That's Yahoo! a busy day. But anyhow, Sherry Salzy, Century Twenty One, mm -hmm. in Georgetown, and uh, her website is Wilco TX Homes. Uh, she handles all Williamson County. Uh, she used to be Georgetown, but. She's doing so much in Williamson County, and we're in such a seller's market right now, you know, that it's that it's a frenzy out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Sherry likes me to always say, uh, would you please, 
if you're going to sell your house, I'd like to do the listing. She's looking for new listings, new listings, new listings. So I just want to promote her, and she is at WilcoTXHomes.com. Again, links on the custom player. So we're back. Great. Isn't this fun? This is fun. Oh, hold it. I, I, I can't. <laughs> I, have to. I have to have my applause. And I don't know what this one is. Let's find out. Oh, okay. Drama. Drama. I love drama. I hate drama. I know. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, I imagine free. in your business that would be <laughs> drama is not something we want to deal with, right? No. All right, so we are we are back, and so uh, the other thing that you were discussing, and I didn't even realize it was this complicated, and it's probably not, but when you were at the Home and Garden yeah. show, you pulled out this big, huge board of pastel color it was, it was beiges Be beiges and I'm going oh my god this, I think this, I ordered in Sherwin Williams was kind enough to send me probably 75 to 100 their different samples mixes on their paints that I and cut everything. up and put 50 on them because it was 50 shades of beige. right which was what she presented and I'm I'm telling you um, you were you said you've gotten two clients mm -hmm. that were there through that so that's awesome but what is how do you do that I mean how do you go in and convince people you know uh, if what the what shades they need and what goes with what <laughs> does that matter well the thing is you well, start well for instance yeah. let's say you got a big screen tv okay. in a room uh -huh. right and and you don't want glare well then you might want to do a darker color but my point is would somebody even think of that or would they just do it and then go crap i got this glare coming off from that's a good point it's a good question. Yeah, it? it's a good question. Thank yeah, you. man. I, You're welcome. Yeah, well, so. it's all specific about the room. I'm so cookie cutter. <laughs> it's it really depends on the room, um, but uh, uh, I've had actually a couple of color consultations recently. People are starting. What to, does that mean? That means that people are wanting to paint parts of their homes and you know get a fresh look before the the holiday season begins, and they're not sure what colors to pick. And so here I go out go. there with my 50 to 75 shades of beige. <laughs> and what we start looking at, the thing about, about neutrals is you have to look at them in relationship to other neutrals. Because if you don't do that, you can't see the underlying color. There is, um, for instance, khaki is a wonderful color, but it's made of red and green. And when you get both of those down there to where it gets really murky, you're starting to get your khaki shades. But some of the khaki has this really strong green cast to it. It has More, a nice feel and look to if it. For some people it's nice and for others it's like, oh my god, there's this green. I didn't want green, I wanted khaki. Right, so how do you take a color, mm -hmm. and I love this, mm -hmm. okay, you go to your local you know, big time mm -hmm. box store, and right. they give you a little sample this big, and you go put it on your wall, and you go, oh, I love that color. Oh, I don't do it. And that then they way. paint it, and then they go, <laughs> I don't love that color. Well, you see, and okay, I, so how does one overcome that? I okay. know you don't. I, I've seen you color you enough That's that right. I can see what's going to happen when it goes up. But what I do is I usually don't go to the big box places. I use companies who have been in the paint industry for a very long time. Um, and those companies support designers by allowing me to order free at no charge, uh, sometimes eight and a half by eleven sheets of that color. Now some people can go and get that color and paint it on the wall and that's all good and fine but, but too. You, but um, I guess what I'm trying to say yeah. is you've got enough experience and knowledge to know when you see something. Well I know what's the under them, color. You can yeah. give them what's going to happen. Oh them, yeah. Right? I so can they see the under Mistake. Well, and here's the thing. If they don't like green and they're picking a khaki and they're going to use a lot of reds, they're going to see green in that khaki. Because what happens in color theory, you have colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. Okay, Greens right. and reds are right. opposite. you got your basic four colors. When you put, well, there's... Five. But I mean the, a the few main more. colors. Yes, right. yeah. So when you put those two colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel, they vibrate. They tend to enhance the other. And so if you don't like green and you're using a khaki but you're insisting on putting red in there, you're going to see green because it's going to pull it out more. Right. Okay. okay? Yeah, okay. That's and so point. then we don't go to a khaki. We need to go to a different color. So it's, it's using some of that color theory information to make sure that we don't step into that big pile of doo-doo because we didn't realize, oh my gosh, I love this red or this burgundy or whatever it is. 
you know, so we steer clear right. of something that has a green undercast. Right. Okay. That's why I wanted to, I, I wanted to ask because to me that just didn't seem very fair that you could ever get uh, from a oh, thumbnail yeah. piece to, to get an idea of what oh, a whole ridiculous. room could look like painted. Yeah. But there's people that actually do that. Well, I can know? do it now, but I couldn't. I can remember my very first job with an interior designer, and he was really great. He's passed away since. But he had a, a one of his previous customers, an older lady, come in. Oh, she needed this peach color for her guest room, and he pulls out this big old paint deck and goes through it and went, no, 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 here's the color you want. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how did he do that? Experience. It's experience, yeah. And it was a beautiful color, you know, but and, I was and just... knew what it was going to look like because he'd seen it, so yeah. he could picture it, whereas you, some yeah. people don't have any clue. But fresh out of college, I was just amazed. I'll never forget that moment. I was so amazed. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so, so what else, um, what is your typical client? What is, uh, what is, I, I mean, I'm sure that's broad. And uh -huh. I mean that to be broad. Yeah. But what is a typical client that you like to work with? There was your, you know, okay. and, and, and okay. is that a fair question? I can give you several scenarios. Yeah, just give me several Because scenarios. I like so working people with. people listening are going to yeah. want to know yeah. what kind of client you work with and, and what or you're where they for, might fit or in. where they might fit in. Yeah. I like working with everybody, to tell you the truth, because I absolutely love doing what so I'm doing. So that's cookie cutter. It is not cookie cutter. <laughs> I'm just it's kidding. not. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Even the lady today, you know, it was just that one consultation, but I just love doing that and giving ideas out. So people that I like to people that I like to work with, people who especially need me, let me put it that way, are sometimes those people are too busy mm -hmm. to be able to sit down and try to go through all that research to figure out what's what. I mean, here I am. I'm an interior designer. I had, at one point, I put together a website. Not my current one. My current one's nice. The one that I put together myself, oh my gosh, it was just excruciating trying to figure it out because that's not my deal. Right. And so for people in their homes, that's usually not their deal. Right. I'm quick, I'm efficient because I know all the resources and I know what happens and I know what works. So I take the agony out of it. That's awesome. Especially people who are busy. Uh, especially people who are agonizing because they might have family yeah, coming I, for the I, holidays. I would think that the market and the fast-paced world we live in, mm -hmm. that busy is an ally of yours. Oh, absolutely. You know? Absolutely, because they respect, they understand that they understand their what they do best, so that they can have the respect for me for what I know how to do pretty pretty, pretty well cool. too. I do love that. Um, so you've got that. You've got uh, people who just don't know where to begin. You know, they, it might maybe they have some time, but. They just have no clue of where to they begin. They're overwhelmed. To right, and that and that find that to be typical. Yeah. Of, of of not having knowledge in a field, right? Yeah. Is they yeah. they get so overwhelmed by where to start with a project that they don't start at all. Well, even some I'm of my clients, yeah. It, right? Even some of my clients who have that sense of style still don't get have, overwhelmed yeah, by they, the they number of things to do. They need somebody to lead do. them through it. Yeah. Yeah, and so really and truly what I've said to a number of people is that what interior design is a lot of times is a lot of organization. It's not just organization of the information, but it's organization of where the colors go, where the patterns go, uh, how the furniture is like. It's all a type of organization, right. and I'm really good at that, and now I'm, I'm, I'm fairly efficient with it too, but not to the point that I'm not. My biggest thing is I have to listen to what they're saying. Because I've got to hear what they aren't saying. Okay? Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, oh, total sense. Because, because people don't always know. Yeah, they might be asking standard stuff, but they may not be asking the right stuff. Right. And so what I've got to do is figure out what it is that they don't know to ask and what it is that they don't you know, know to say. That's a great point because um, I was a client the other day asked mm -hmm. me, uh, you know, what, a, what should my videos be about? And I said, well, you probably should put five videos up of your top five questions that are asked, mm -hmm. but I said you should follow up with that with five videos of what they should ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, which is what you're the point yeah. you're trying to make. Yeah, but they just don't know enough. Yeah, so they don't know what to ask. Yeah, so that's where I come in so to you can help try to sort that gaps. out. Exactly, exactly. Um, I come in even with people who, who they feel like they've got their home together, but something just doesn't feel right. Okay, you know it's it's so fun to go in because sometimes it's just a gentle nudge of some furniture. Sometimes it's a reorganization of some of the artwork that they have that might be um, the balance is off. You know, it's kind of like that 
that artwork, that picture that you're leaning against that's now crooked that I just want to straighten. I can't tell you how badly I want to straighten I that. Know, I know. I, but I, I'm looking past that. But, I, you know, it's stuff I, like I, that. I, I love that. <laughs> Good enough for the show. Good enough for the show. They okay, can't see it. So, so then, um, and, I, and I'm trying to... Gosh, I forgot what I was going to say. I lost my train of thought. But okay. go ahead. Keep talking. Because okay. I do have a question. I'll think of it. It'll, it'll come back. That's because it'll... I got remember. I, got I know. I'm looking at that artwork. That was... So I've had some clients that have just had me to come out to accessorize. And you know what? That's fun. It is. That is fun. I've taught a class on accessorizing before. Because it makes a difference in a room. It personalizes it. And if the balance of the accessories are off, mm -hmm. that's the stuff that's in the eye level. That's what you're seeing when you first come into that house. Okay, right. and so it has that impact, that very personal impact. So here's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. With the advance in lighting, yeah, with the LED LEDs, lighting uh -huh. out that exposes a lot of corners and dirt and and and. Well, know, we don't need to light a room up paint. so much, right? I know, <laughs> but there's people, but they do because yeah. they're brighter, right? Right. So you're working with a whole different technology in lighting now, correct? And so, well, and I, it's it's not that much different though. It's, you can calm it down, I yeah. know, but it is a different lighting. And yeah, it can be brighter. Well, the thing with lighting, whatever type of lighting, that was we're probably looking, the dumbest thing I've ever brought up. Then it is not. No, it I'm is just, not because I'm this just, is I'm perfect. Kidding. Lighting's cool. Lighting is very cool. The thing that we're looking at with lighting, whatever type it is, is the CRI, the color rendering index. If you have sunlight, which most of us like the color that we are seeing in sunlight, natural. that's what we're used to, that natural, natural light, that's like a 100% CRI. And when we used to have the fluorescence back in the 70s, that had the cool white, the warm white deluxe, those were in the 50s and noise. 60s. Oh, that had to do with the ballast. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's And some still do that, but... <laughs> That's bad. But that was a 50 or 60 CRI. And what you get from an incandescent bulb, I think, is somewhere in the 80s. Right. You know, it's still not quite where we would like it. You can get fluorescent tubes now that are in the 90 CRI. Right there on top the of LEDs it, right. are right there in the yeah. 80s and the yeah. 90s. Very close. So what we're looking at with the LED or the fluorescent and the incandescent, which is kind of starting to go away, yeah. is we're looking at... Um, the energy efficiency that we're getting, the uh, spread of light that we're getting, what type of uh, uh, lamp is what the technical term is for a light bulb, what kind of bulb we're using you know, to get the light, and what effect do we want to do in the, the room. Most people, unless it's a classroom don't, or a kitchen maybe, don't need to brighten it up so much that you see all that faded stuff and all that dirt. I don't see that when I go into people's homes. Honestly, I am not looking at that. That is No, I know. But, I, I but, get that. But I'm just saying it, it, when people start switching up yeah. their lighting systems and they see these. They've got to look at the wattage. Of, uh, then all of a sudden they're going, wow, we need yeah. to make some other changes because this exactly. is really showing. This well, is and really you can't changing do, the look and the feel of the home. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm you you to can't say. go for the the so and so equals such and such because there's a, a different conversion, kind of like metric right. to our normal what we consider. So lighting's becoming a whole different oh, yeah. game now. Yeah. But one of the cool things about lighting is I've gone into several a number of homes that have the big tall ceilings, kind of a cavernous like great room area, and it feels kind of dark and gloomy in there. Well, we don't need to light up the whole space. We do need to have regular lamps around the sofas and right, chairs. Right, kind of build it up. Right. But the key thing in a lot of those rooms is keeping the corners from getting too dark. And if I can get a can light that comes in. 24 to 30 inches depending on the height of the space from each corner so that it comes down and glazes if you will the side mm -hmm. and I can have that on a dimmer you know all of a sudden it's no longer a cave it warms that up, it warms up and it opens the room back up it is it is lighting's fun yeah I was gonna <laughs> say lighting to me would be kind of the fun part of it right mm -hmm. once mm -hmm. you figure out what you're doing with it then you can have now I am um, I know this is weird but I prefer non-bright light. I mm -hmm. don't like it when the kitchen light's turned on and I don't have a lamp on. I mm -hmm. can't stand that that kind of light. I like kind of darker, mm -hmm. uh, you know, lamp light mm -hmm. and not the bright light. I can't handle it. When people flip on that kitchen light in there, yeah. I go, go, go. Well, and maybe you have too much wattage in there, too. Well, it's just, it's yeah, it's... But my, it's too bright. My, my point is, is I don't like. <laughs> I'd rather have a lamp in a kitchen yeah. and use that light than put on that big 
right. light above right. it, right? Well, I'll tell I, you. I'm but, not a bright light person. But when you're doing certain tasks, like what I'm finding yeah, is more difficult. Stuff, yeah. yeah, I get that. And what I find is more difficult, like just the other day, I was trying to thread a needle. Oh, my goodness. You need to lighten the glasses. Yeah, I do need to lighten the glasses. Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> but you know, there are certain tasks where you need brighter you need, light, right, so it's exactly. all specific for the function that okay, you're doing. Cool. All yeah. Right. So we are uh, getting toward the end. We've got a little bit longer to go, but I've got some more sponsors to cover, if you don't mind. So we're going to get really. Yay! And, and there we are, right? And uh, we're going to talk about Mike O'Neill, the Money Coach. Uh, mkoneal.com. That's mkoneal.com. Mike has uh, developed the system over the years, uh, showing people, especially younger couples, just get married uh, to really properly handle their money, and so that by the time they do retire, unlike me, they actually have some money in the bank that they can live on. It, it you know, and I'm not. So it's really good. He saved his money off his four, you know, off his basic tax forms when he worked for corporations. And so he's he's got all his debt paid off, and there's no probably there's probably no better person to talk to than somebody that's got mm -hmm. everything paid off. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've done something right, right? Whether you disagree that that's the way you should do it, but he shows people how to save money. But he's also part of the speakers association here in Austin, and he does a lot of seminars. He brings coaches in from all over the country, and they come together to show businesses how to become profitable, and not just being a hobby. And so he's got videos, but he also has all seminars listed on his website. There's some coming up. Go check out mkoneal.com. That's Mike O'Neill, but that's mkoneal.com. Go check him out. And then there's my buddy, uh, Todd Frank. <clears throat> you lose your voice every <laughs> once in a while. At uh, Jerry's Garage. And Jerry's Garage is in Round Rock, Texas. He's mm -hmm. been in business since 1967. It's a family-owned business. It doesn't hardly get much better than that. Matter of fact, when I was seeking out auto repair when I lived up in Dallas, it was always looking for family-owned because I knew family-owned had reputation, and I knew that that meant something. Mm -hmm. uh, and they and they work on both uh, import, domestic, all trucks, all cars. They also have a transmission shop that can completely rebuild a transmission, and you know what the worst case price is before they tear it apart, and, and mm -hmm. it's usually not that much, but they give you, here's going to be the worst case, and here's what we hope, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't tear it up, have it laying in pizza to go, hey, you need that, try. we need about 20 <laughs> grand to get that fixed, you know, yeah. so you know what's going on. You can check out Jerry's Garage at Jerry's, and that's hyphen garage.com, so Jerry's hyphen garage.com. And they've been in business since 1967, family-owned, right here in Round Rock, Texas. They're slam dunk, and he's got a lot of fun videos on his YouTube channel. Yes, he the does. The Sludge Monster, and he's got uh, the Bumper Bumper series going with Shay to show ladies the basics on cars from one bumper to the end of the car. Or even guys who are uncomfortable. The guys that are really uncomfortable with, what's that for? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do if I touch that? Okay, you're right. Hey, it works both ways. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, cars are complicated today. I don't know of anybody uh, really that has, unless they've gone through the master technician on some of these foreign cars and some of the domestic they're building, they're very self-contained with computer systems, and they've got a lot of proprietary mm -hmm. Parts in there. Reason is so you can bring it back to the dealership, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. those guys keep up with that. So my point is, bring it to them. And mm -hmm. if you're already using somebody and you want a second opinion before you get, if you get ready to spend a lot of money, go get a second opinion. Mm -hmm. Just like going to the doctor. All right. Mm -hmm. So we're back with you. Cool. Uh, let's go through your website again. Okay, uh, AllisonInteriors.net. Yeah, I want you to kind of take the the last ten minutes, if you would, Diana, and kind of. Tell us, you know, what did we miss tonight? What did what, what are some other things that you like to do? What is your favorite thing to do? If you had a brother, a, a brother, and I know what, you did my it very all. favorite. What the, what's the what, what's the things you love to do the most? What one of the th I love all of it, obviously. Okay, but what I really that. love <laughs> is when someone is starting with a new home and being involved in the the builder and the architect team. So I've the, done that so the, several so times. So the brand new. Uh -huh. And so it's not even a hole in the gr or you don't know that y'all have that many holes in the ground here, but it's not started. I have some I need to send you to. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Well, it you builds should. builds homes. Perfect. Right. Okay. Because, you know, working as a team, what happens, the architect is trained to see that home in a certain way. The builder is trained to see the home in probably a more uh, practical hands-on how it's being built. The designer is trained to see that home in a whole different way 
functionality on the inside out. My whole thing is make it function first and then let's make it pretty after that. Because if it doesn't function, it doesn't matter how pretty it is, does it? No, and, and yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not functional. Functional and then the aesthetics. And so working with the client at that point, because I have uh, on numerous occasions you know, and what's great is working as a team, the architect doesn't take offense if I ask a question or say, but what if we did this or that? Because it's that synergy of, of design ideas that's really cool. Yeah, you would think that that would probably be something that they would probably appreciate, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's coming up with ideas. Yeah, to, oh, it's, to and it's great. So and it, and it just long. makes a better, it just so makes you a need, better So you home. work with builders mm -hmm. and architects in that mm -hmm. sense. So meeting builders is important to mm -hmm. you, right? Right. To, to at least get their card and roll it out. Right. Uh, if you need this, I'm here. Right. Right. And right. so, uh, what other kind of jobs do you like to to do? Preference to do? You like the consulting? I know that. I love. I could do consulting day in and day That's out. That's what I'm saying. If you dropped yeah. everything and just walked in and did two hours with somebody and said, "Here's what I think you ought to do," and then just walked out the door, you would do. Well, that. and still be there for. Support, I know, yeah. but I'm saying if you just <laughs> if that was the only thing you did. You know, I would be very happy right. doing that too. Right. Okay. Uh, the other aspect, whether it was new construction or the large remodel jobs, I guess part of that that I really like is having control and say. Maybe control is not the right word, but having say and influence on every aspect of that job. Because with new construction, I also sit down with the client. And we figure out where we have to have the electrical outlets, where we really want the light switches. And that's not to say that the lighting guys, uh, you know, can't do yeah, that. Yeah, but you know but what know, I miss. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, yeah. if I ever built a house again, mm -hmm. I've, I've had a couple and I'm probably not going to do it again. But the one thing that I wished I had done mm -hmm. in my homes, I built one. I wished I'd put electrical outlets in the floor. And there's a special way of, do, of With, where to put it. But in the slab, but, but, uh, yeah. but in Texas, because it's slab, the thing that scared me was what happens if something happens. Well, that's you what you think about. It, you know? uh, but as a designer, when I'm putting a, an outlet in the floor, I'm thinking already of the various different seating arrangements right, that will happen. Right, because you don't want to reach a core. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Be, uh, and wall. so, you know, we just figured out where yeah. is it always going to be covered? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Inaccessible. Exactly. Um, I've done a lot of uh, research and a lot of uh, uh, stuff with aging in place. So looking at a home, even if it's a young couple that's building, you know what? Some people actually go skiing and do things where they tear out their knee, and they aren't old, but they're in a wheelchair for a little bit of time. Need, they need, need a help. house that will accommodate them instead of that. I my pet peeve is that two foot door into a little toilet closet. When when you could have a much broader door, if you're going to have the closet and get in, yeah, yeah. I mean, even some guys are broader that, than that two foot. That just means that they're not thinking. It's it's a minimum code. Right, that's what I'm saying. They're mm -hmm. they're just doing what's required of it, and nobody's thinking about that. And they're thinking they're thinking that there's so many dollars involved if they change it. Well, there's not. Right. That's the crazy thing is there's not a lot of dollars at that point well, That's involved. pretty amazing. But it? so that's where you get someone in with a different viewpoint that can ask those questions and push those points, you know? And make them at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so home builders is a mm -hmm. contractors, mm -hmm. um, architects is somebody you like to meet with, consulting with the actual homeowners, all older homes that need to be yeah. revamped and what else? And you know one thing I really like doing is I like talking to people. You and think? I do. <laughs> I do. And so I would never know that. I do like no, you are giving personal. presentations. You are very personal. Well, right. thank you. Yeah, and that's one thing you you need to mention. Yeah. If, if you want to speak, if people yeah. want you to come speak at some network event or talk Almost about design, Almost anything in interior you love, design. You love to do that. I love to do that. Tell me how much time I have right. and I will fill it. I have done uh, presentations up to five hours before. Wow. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. So it just depends on. Well, that would be an interactive. That would be a very a interactive thing. one. Yeah, I talk. They work. I talk. Yeah, it's a we, workshop yeah. work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got ones where you can do thirty minutes, twenty minutes, twenty minutes, to kind 15. Of introduce yourself. Yeah, I have like. no clue how long the one the home show was. I think it was supposed to be around twenty. Right. And yeah. so your website again. AllisonInteriors.net, and from that website, once you get into the About page, you can also access my YouTube channel, which is Diana Allison. You can access my Twitter, which I am starting to tweet. She just started that, y'all. <laughs> I have a Facebook. You're getting pretty good at the social thing, though. You, it you, is so since you've different. Been here, it is. It is. You've it is really so well. different from doing business. Uh, 
in the past. Right. Yeah. So we are winding down. Okay. Final thoughts. You sure this is it? This is it. Ah. We're, we're bumping up against My final the hour. thoughts? What are my final thoughts just supposed to be? Just whatever you want to say. There okay. are, I don't ask that for everybody. I'm just saying, is there any final tips you want to leave us tonight? Uh, well, I will say that anytime you can bring a professional in, even if it's just a one hour consultation, to have them look at what you're doing. Sometimes all I'm doing is validating what people are doing. Right. And sometimes there's some validation and some suggestions, or could I just say corrections? To, yeah. to say this might be what you intend but this is what's going to happen if you do that. Um, so what I usually do is I end up saving people money in the long run even with those simple consultations. They aren't simple. I love doing them but even with the consultations. Cool. Alright. <coughs> I just coughed. I've been fighting allergies y'all so forgive me. <laughs> uh, whatever's in the air, I'm on my medication but every once in a while that spasmic cough comes up. Catches, but, yeah. Hey we are uh, with Diana Allison tonight with Allison and Associates Interiors. You can find her at allisoninteriors.net and I highly recommend you go look her up. She's in the Austin area and for all the sponsors and folks I did not get to mention on air, you're still got a link to the website on the custom player which is gold really mm -hmm. because as many people as we push it out to uh, they go to the, and it's even labeled sponsor so we're so happy to have you and the ones that don't get mentioned get rotated to the next show but everybody has a link so mm -hmm. that show is always out either tonight late or tomorrow morning on mm -hmm. the custom player so be checking us out this is the Hurdy Burke Internet Broadcast Network and we will be back on air right here in Round Rock, Texas next week from 7 to 8 p.m. we're live every Tuesday night come check us out we'll see you guys around the corner and thank you Hurdy and good night good night